How's it going everybody? It's Riley's Red Zone here back with another NFL video and in today's video I'm going to be going over every week two game this week. So I'm first going to start by talking about what happened on Thursday this week, the Thursday night game, and also go over how I did last week to start the season's worth of picks. So let's talk about what happened this week. Starting with the recap of the Thursday night games, as I mentioned in the last picks video, I will not always be able to get a picks video out by the Thursday night game. So I always put out my Thursday night picks on my Twitter at Riley Red Zone. You can follow it for those weekly picks on the Thursday nights. And I've started with a hot streak here of 2-0 and on the Thursday nights. I picked the Bucks last week and that worked out for me. I went 10-6 and if you include last week's Thursday night game and the rest of the games in week one. So not bad. And we start the week out with a 1-0 and start this week as well. And so I talked about in my tweet that I really think it came down to uh, the defense is on both sides. And there was definitely a controversial call at the end. They called Dexter Lawrence of the Giants off sides. Today, specifically the day I'm recording this, we're starting to get some uh, controversy over maybe he wasn't off sides. The NFL's trying to defend it, but although we haven't really gotten any uh, pure camera footage, there's been some proof on other cameras that maybe it wasn't, but... Uh, I think just it was the call on the field. The NFL is trying to say it was at least two refs making that call. So it is what it is. It was, you know, controversial. But uh, I think my tweet was fairly accurate. I think that although the game was higher scoring than I expected, it did come down to the wire. It was close. But it came uh, down to Washington's defense stepping up. Uh, and I still had enough confidence in Washington's offense with Heineke where I knew that them losing Fitzpatrick would be uh, in effect, but Heineke was able to get the offense rolling and then make a great play at the end there to Ricky Seals-Jones in the end zone, and uh, it came down to you know New York struggling on offense when it mattered the most, some drops by Darius Slayton, uh, for example, in the end zone, and Daniel Jones I think was okay. Overall had some good plays, uh, maybe some... Not as good moments, but I think he was overall decent. Um, but it was a good game to watch. As I said, a controversial ending. So an interesting start to the week. But more importantly, in my case, I start the week with the picks 1-0. Raiders-Steelers is the first game I'm talking about. And these are two teams that went through some different things last week. The Steelers, I would say, pulled off an upset. I think Buffalo was favored in that game. For sure, they were favored uh, like on the spreads. But... It was overall, I'd say, pretty demanding that I think all the analysts on that game picked Buffalo. I, including myself, I think the Steelers really um, came to play. And it came down to the wire, you know, a blocked punt really saved the day for them. But um, I think that we see the same thing where their offense, to me, is not unbelievable right now. They really couldn't get Najee going, but their defense was able to step up enough now that they have T.J. Watt for sure. Um, I was actually impressed by the Raiders uh, this week. I thought that Derek Carr um, showed some flashes at the end of the game to really go down there and win that nail biter. Um, I do think that he started a little rusty. It seemed like he was maybe just chucking it to Waller no matter what, but I think he started to rebound. These are two teams I did not expect to win last week, um, but I think that they both performed well enough to get the wins. And I th I'm going to go with the Steelers here. I just think their defense is well enough. The Raiders, to me, have, you know, they proved me wrong last week. But I still just am not super confident in their ability, both as a team. But then their roster uh, and coaching, to me, is not good enough to really lead them to many more victories. So I'm going to go with the Steelers in this matchup. I expect their defense to play well again. And if they can get anything on offense, specifically if they can get Najee going, I think they're going to be looking pretty good. Perhaps the toughest game for me to predict this week is the Bengals and the Bears. They're two teams that are kind of in a similar spot, um, I would say, of like maybe projected success. Once again, we see here two teams that kind of went through different things. The Bengals looked great against the Vikings, and I did not expect them to look that well. They got everything going. They were given mixing the ball a lot, and then they were able to get guys like Jamar Chase going in the passing game. I thought they performed really, really well. 
I do think the Bears, although they lost, actually didn't look that bad. And it really comes down to can Andy Dalton perform well enough? And I think playing against his former team is really what uh, was enough for me here. Uh, I think that actually will come to play. And now I will say it the uh, like a lot of people are saying. I believe that even right now, Justin Fields is the better quarterback. But if I'm assuming Dalton is the main quarterback, at least for right now, I think that that revenge factor could potentially be a play. Uh, but specifically, I think the Bears, although, yes, it started terrible on Sunday night and they didn't obviously win, I think they actually performed relatively well. By the end of the game, they started figuring out Los Angeles' offense and Stafford started to slow down just a bit. So they have a decent defense. I think I saw enough from them to see, okay, they actually can perform. Dalton was getting rid of the ball quick. So, although the Bengals came off of a hot week, I thought about picking the upset here. The Bears are favored by 2.5. I am still going to go with them. I was 1-0 and last week in upset picks. I'm not pulling one quite yet here. So, I'm going with the Bears minus 2.5. I, I think that they that will be very, very close. I could see this one coming down all the way to a field goal. I think this will be one of the best, at least when it comes to close games of the week. Texans-Browns is the next game I'm going to talk about here. The Texans were able to pull a win off last week against the Jags. I thought at the time, you know, they're like the worst team in football. Um, You know, they kind of proved me wrong a bit there, getting a win against Jacksonville. Now, Jacksonville, uh, I also thought was not going to be great, uh, but they did not look good at all. The Browns actually kept it close with the Chiefs and almost pulled off a win. This week, they are favored by 13 against the Texans. That is very interesting. I think that might be a bit much. Uh, I was extremely low on the Texans. I have them as my last team when I started the power rankings. But now I think they've risen a bit just to get a win over Jacksonville. Um, And I think they're actually kind of a scrappy team is how I would describe them right now. I like the leadership of Tyrod Taylor. And he brings enough to a team where he can bring some motivation. But I think the Browns are just way too overpowered offensively. They succeeded without Odell last week, so I have no doubts they'll do it again. I think just their running game is phenomenal to have both Chubb and Hunt is very impressive. And also their defense can be extremely explosive. They made uh, Mahomes look, uh, you know, kind of panicked at certain times. So I think that the Browns step up here and they get a win. But I do think this could potentially be a closer game than people think. Rams Colts. I think this will be one of the better games of The week the Rams looked great last weekend. Um, I had them as my number two seed in the NFC, and that's what they looked like right out the gate. I was a huge Matthew Stafford believer this offseason. I wasn't really able to publicize that, but um, I knew that you get this guy out of Detroit. He's going to do something special, and you not only get him out of Detroit, but you get him with Sean McVay. That's just unbelievable. They're getting guys going like Van Jefferson, even Deshaun Jackson looked involved. I mean, Robert Woods got a touchdown. Apparently him and Cooper Cup are really on the same page. Tyler Higby was involved. They're getting everybody involved out there in Los Angeles. So I think their offense is rolling. And you have two of the best defensive players in football, if not the top two, uh, between Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey. I think the Rams... Um, their playoff, their limited playoff experience could come to bite them in the end, but I truly think that by the end of the season, uh, they are going to be one of the best rosters overall in the entire league. The Colts, you know, they lost to the Seahawks, but you know the Seahawks are a really, really good team, especially when they have first half of the season with Russell Wilson. So uh, I'm not too concerned there, but I do think that the Rams are just way too overpowered. Um, so I think they're actually going to win by more than what they're projected to right now. So um, I'm going to go with the Rams in this one. Bills, Dolphins. Once again, we have two teams that were you know opposite, where one won and one didn't. And I would have been surprised if you told me the Bills would not win and the Dolphins would. Uh, the Bills ended up losing to the Steelers, as I talked about with the Steelers, in a close one. You know, it came down to a, a blocked punt. But... um. I think that the Bills offense, I still believe in. I think they're extremely, extremely good on offense. Just with the upside of Josh Allen, Gabriel Davis is starting to develop. If they can still get, you know, older, Emmanuel Sanders involved. And they obviously have Stephon Diggs. I think that their offense 
is phenomenal and that they are going to have a bounce back here. The Dolphins, I had the Patriots winning that game, so they actually pulled off an upset in my book. Um, but Tua, you know, I just saw a stat again today. Like, he has a lot of wins, uh, but maybe hasn't seen the individual statistic production. I feel I'm probably still on the higher side on Tua, but I'm somewhere in the middle now where is he one of the best quarterbacks? No, and I even talked about it in their breakdown that um, – their, their preview uh, that I don't think Tua takes a huge step up this year. I think he, he might need one next year. Um, but, it, hey, if he's leading them to wins, that's what really matters. So they have a solid defense, but I think the Bills are too much offensively um, for the Dolphins to get a win here. So I'm going to go with the Bills in this one. The other AFC game, Patriots and Jets. I picked the Patriots to beat the Dolphins. They did not. Uh, but Mac looked okay, and I think that they're going to bounce back here. They're playing the Jets, who struggled last week against the Panthers. I had them as my second lowest-ranked team. Um, I think we saw for good reason right now. Uh, they still need time. I believe in Robert Sala, but at this very, very moment, uh, I think they still need some more time. I love Zach Wilson as a player. I think Corey Davis was a, a solid signing who's looking good, but... Um, they just need some more time, in my opinion. So I'm going with the Patriots here, just the experience, uh, defensively, coaching, and even though they have a rookie quarterback, I think he looked good enough. Uh, I'm going to go with the Patriots here in this one. I think that this will be likely uh, potentially a blowout. I'm going to go with. I like the Jets where they're going. They have solid direction compared to some other teams, uh, like the Jaguars and Texans, for example, or even the Raiders. I feel that the Jets have a brighter future, but right now, I think they need some more time. Niners, Eagles. I think this is actually a very interesting game. The Niners look good. They almost choked it at the end, but they were able to hold on. They were able to get Trey Lance involved, even when he's not the starting quarterback. So I think that they have a lot of potential here. Uh, still for the Niners. The Eagles also looked really, really good. Jalen Hurts looked solid getting it to Devontae Smith, who I talked about, you know, in the pre-draft process and everything. I think that he was pure game, perhaps the best receiver in this class. So I was not surprised at all to see him already making some plays for this team. So I like the upside there. I just think that the Niners are a more complete team at the moment. I think their defense um, is better overall than the Eagles defense. Both have kind of similar range offenses. Um, but I'm going to go with the Niners here just because they have a better defense and I feel like they're going to be more ready to go here. Uh, they do, though, start already getting the injury bug, which is not good with Mostert going down, Greenlaw going down on defense. They're going to need someone like Trey Sermon or Elijah Mitchell here to step up on offense. So, uh, I'll be interested to see what happens there, but I think that the Niners just are an overall better built team, and that's why I have them getting the win. Saints versus Panthers should be an interesting one. The Saints looked so good last week against the Packers. Jameis was just unbelievable, and I think that will continue for the season, but it won't be to uh, that pace you know that he set for himself, but I think this will be the best season yet that we've seen out of Jameis Winston. And uh, the Panthers look good as well against Arnold's former team, but... I think the Saints are just too good of a team offensively. And, uh, you know, the Panthers got a win, but I felt it was one of the, you know, lower teams to get a win last week. They played against the Jets, you know, who I just talked about recently a few minutes ago that uh, I don't think they're at the top of the league whatsoever. So I'm going to go with the Saints here. They look good last week. I think they keep that hot streak going. And uh, Jameis really proves himself once again to be uh, a starter in the NFL. Broncos, Jags, interesting one here. The Broncos I don't feel great about, but they were able to get a win over the Giants last week as I predicted, and I think they're going to do the same thing here because they play the Jags, who mathematically, you know, I had the Texans as the worst team. You lose to the worst team, maybe you're the worst team now. Just does not sound like Urban Meyer's working out, and obviously it's way early. You know, it was a first game ever for Trevor, but uh, they did not look good last week. The Broncos also get hit, you know, with the Jerry Judy injury. Um, but they have guys to step up there. They have Cortland Sutton still. They have Tim Patrick to step up. And then they still have guys like KJ Hamler behind them. So I still feel good about the Broncos. I think it was smart to start Teddy. I talked about that preseason as well. Um, that I think that Teddy was the smart choice for them to go with. And uh, I think that... 
you, when you're playing the Jags, you got a solid chance of winning. So I'm going to go with the Broncos here. They have a solid team, good defense, um, and I think Teddy is proving to be a pretty solid quarterback. So I'm going to go with the Broncos here on this one. Vikings, Cardinals, two teams uh, that went on opposite ends of the spectrum. The Cardinals looked like perhaps the best team in football, pound for pound, last week. I mean, Kyler was phenomenal. Now, I feel like I'm almost a year, I shot a little, a year early, basically, on the Cardinals, uh, you know, I guess the hype train really is what it is. I, I hopped on board last year, uh, and it, it didn't really work out. You know, they weren't unbelievable last year, but hey, this year they start with a great start. Kyler looks phenomenal. And we were saying that last year, too, so I'm not going to buy in it way early. But, man, he he looks like perhaps, um, you know, the hottest player right now when it comes to getting a, a, a fire start to the season, just a streak going. Um, and Chandler Jones, absolutely phenomenal on defense. And the addition of J.J. Watt and getting, you know, draft picks like Isaiah Simmons going and Zayvon Collins, they're, they're, they're starting to look good on both sides of the ball. I think they're one of the best teams in football right now. I had them, uh, you know, as a borderline top five team, and they've only proved that, if not better. And the Vikings ended up having to go to overtime with the Bengals. They came back, and then they ended up losing in overtime because, you know, I guess we'll never know whether Dalvin Cook's knee was down. But um, they, I do think, just have a rough start to schedule. I really think they needed a win against Cincinnati. So uh, I think it's going to be tough for them to get a win against the Cardinals team, even though I think they'll improve from last week. Uh, I think the Cardinals are too much, and they're going to get a win in this matchup. Falcons, Bucks, once again. I mean, the the Bucks didn't look unbelievably better than the Cowboys last week. It was a very close game, but they looked fine. They're Super Bowl champs. You know, you had a few just bad breaks, like a fumble from Ronald Jones, a pick off of uh, Leonard Fournette's hands. I mean, and then the other pick was really just a Hail Mary for Brady. So, uh, Brady looked great out there. Gronk looked unbelievable. Um, so I think that's good to see for sure getting him going, but then it's who's the top receiver for the Bucks. I don't really know because on paper, you'd have to think Edwin's or Godwin, but if you're going off of last week, to me, it looks like Brady was looking to go to Antonio Brown the most. So I think they're still on fire. Their defense is good. The Falcons did not look good last week. They lost to the Eagles. Just they couldn't get anything going offensively, uh, specifically struggling with the line. I know you've probably seen that picture of Matt Ryan on the ground this week. Um, and that would explain what happened last week. So I'm going with the Bucks here. I think just the Falcons are still needing some time. They're still pretty rusty. So uh, I'm going to go with the defending Super Bowl champs in this matchup. Cowboys, Chargers, as I mentioned, the Cowboys were pretty close to the Buck. Dak Prescott looked very, very well. He was finding everybody out on the field there. They just need to get Zeke going. I think he struggled a bit. Um, but the passing game for Dallas looked very, very solid. Uh, and the Chargers also were able to get a win, you know, with uh, Justin Herbert out there. I think that he looked very, very good. I think he's one of the best, you know, young quarterbacks in the league. So I'm going to go with the Chargers here. I do think this is potentially an upset. I was looking at, though, not throwing it out there. This could potentially be, uh, if, I, if we talk about the game so far, um, I might say this might be the likeliest for an upset. It's either this or the Bengals-Bears game. So I'm going to go with the Chargers, although I actually think this will be a very, very, very close game. And I would not be surprised if the Cowboys were to somehow pull off a win here, um, you know, if the Chargers' defense were to struggle. Because we know the Cowboys have everything they need offensively. So uh, I expect this one to be a very, very close game. Titans, Seahawks, uh, the Titans did not look good last week, but maybe it's more so the Cardinals are just phenomenal. I don't know, but we, we need to see something from the Titans as a bounce back. I believed in them going into this season, you know, um, having Tannehill and Derrick Henry, you would think on paper that would be good again. They bring in Julio, um, but th we didn't see it last week. But I, I did know coming into the season, I knew their defense is probably honestly one of the worst in the league, but their offense is one of the best. So it kind of starts to bounce out. And the for the Seahawks, don't ever, ever doubt first quarter, maybe even first half season Russell Wilson. Man, he is phenomenal. He has perhaps the prettiest deep ball. 
Uh, he was able to get Lockett going last week. You know, they have Metcalf still. I think just he's just doing so much right now, especially what he does every year early in the season. So uh, I'm going to go with the Seahawks in this matchup. I think just the Titans didn't look great last week. But this is another one where I think this will actually end up very, very close and would not be surprised to see the Titans bounce back very well. But I'm going to go with the Seahawks. I just think Russell Wilson is performing at such a high level right now, and he keeps it going. Last two games of the week, we have your headliner, starting with the Chiefs and Ravens. Uh, the Ravens getting two primetime games in a row, and I think this is going to be the game of the week. I think this is going to be extremely close. I'm going with the Chiefs because I think their offense ends up being enough. I believe in the Ravens' defense, but I think when you face up against Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and Tyree Kill, that's insane, not to mention Clyde Edwards-Alaire. And then Baltimore, I like Lamar this season, but with all the injuries they've had at running back, even though Tyson Williams did look very, very solid, um, they're lacking at receiver still. You know, they needed something from Marquise Brown. They were able to get it, uh, but he's a little banged up this week. Sammy Watkins is almost always injured. He looked decent last week, though, and they can still get Mark Andrews. So I think that both teams on paper have everything they need to potentially be successful in this game. Um, but I'm going to go with the Chiefs. I think this will be the best game of the week, and this is one you don't want to miss. This are two of the top quarterbacks. They're, there's a reason those two are on the thumbnail. I think this is going to be one of the best games of the week, and it really could go either way, but I'm going to go with the Chiefs. And to close out the video, we got the Lions and the Packers. The Lions looked terrible until they started making a late comeback, but it just quite wasn't enough for them to beat the Niners. And the Packers looked probably the worst of almost any team in the entire league. Uh, losing 38-3 was awful, but I expect a huge comeback, a bounce back here from Rodgers and company, uh, getting Devontae Adams going. If they can get anything from the run game, then you're starting to think that this team might be pretty solid. Um, but they definitely did not look good last week. But I expect a huge bounce back. I think just the Lions are lacking offensively, specifically at the receiver spot. Um, so I'm going to go with the Packers in this matchup, even though I think this will be a fun one on Monday Night Football. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.